Welcome to the Fashion and Color Show, where we have dynamic conversations with designers and creatives influencing fashion. This show was inspired by our book, Fashion and Color, Volume 1, that serves to preserve the history of black designers A to Z. Let's get into the show. So, so I have with us here today, Mr. Worry Vice. And I'm trying to be all professional because, quite we frankly, we need to do all that. <laughs> <laughs> I love this it though. Is worry, worry is, um, you know, I would say like an image architect. He is uh, a stylist. He is a founder of a candle company called Vice, and I could not be more thrilled to have him here. Thanks. And I'm gonna share a little story. Uh oh. Um, back in 2016, we had a show, Harlem's Fashion Row had a show. It was again, like one of our hardest shows. And you guys probably hear me say that about a lot of years, mm -hmm. <laughs> because quite frankly, it hasn't been easy, but this year was particularly tough. And, um, after the event was over, everyone was kind of like doing their fashion thing, hugging and kiss kissing or whatever. And... I see Worry like after the show and I'm like, Worry, I need you to come outside with me because after that show, I was literally like about to just mm. break down. Mm -hmm. Like, and I walked through everybody, me and Worry walked outside. We sat on a bench and I just let all the emotions I had held mm. in out on his shoulder. And he gave me a talk that <laughs> night um, that he doesn't know has sustained me for mm. multiple years. Mm. I don't even know if you remember what you said to me, but I do. I remember us talking. I don't remember exactly what I said to you, but I do remember that. I remember that moment because I remember what you look like in the moment. <laughs> of course you would. Well, no, I, I just remember, I saw something uh -huh. beautiful. Like you say it was one of your hardest yeah. nights, but I saw, because I, I was looking at the growth mm. and where we were. We'll come, I guess, well, tell me what, what I said to you. But I, I remember that because I was like, oh my God, we were at Chelsea Piers. Like the venue had gotten bigger and there were more hands that were helping and you had pro teams doing hair and makeup. Like there was a certain growth in the space and Obviously, later we'll discuss it, but with growth comes lots of change. Lots of challenges. Lots of challenges. Yeah. Lots of uh, uncomfortable spaces. Yes. It was, it was, it was a really... My Lord. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord. We, we, I mean, it was, that was a tough, tough, tough night for me. Yeah. And I was a new mom. Sky was one. Just born. And, um... And so I just, like the weight of everything, it felt like it was too much. Mm -hmm. And normally I can hold it together even if I'm feeling away, mm -hmm. but that night I couldn't. And for whatever reason, I kind of felt like you were the one that I was like, he's 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 gonna get this. Mm -hmm. And um and not judge me for it, mm -hmm. but like actually be there to support me through it. And that night you explained to me, you said, Brandis you think that all you're doing is something for the designers. Mm. And he said, no, it's for, you were like, it's for all of us. Mm. And when you kind of explained it to me, like, I don't know, like I have hung on to those words for so long. Cause you was like, you know, who, what do stylists, black stylists have to get, like to, um, to anticipate, mm -hmm. to hope for. Mm -hmm. Like the stylist of the year award is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it as that. Mm -hmm. And so you helped me to even see. At this see... point, now you've inspired others, so. Wow. I just, <laughs> I just, I just, uh, so that night, that night was important. It, it, honestly, that's my favorite Ooh. moment between you and I. Uh, there's that, but there's the night that I found out that, you know, the 908 was in the building studio museum in Harlem, that which is the night that we met. And I'll never forget that because you were such a bright light in the room. And it's really weird because I very rarely go out to any industry events anymore. And I remember when I meet light, I remember light. Mm -hmm. And you're light that has over time become family like. It just is what it is. And it's true. I mean, HFR has created a space and 
I love the alliances that it's made over time. And just even the people that are involved um, with it and how it's creating a space to persevere in. And just each year looking at what um, not only happens through Fashion Week, but the activations of um, of what's happening in the fashion community, what's happening with us as people of color, um, and then just even the olive branches and the tentacles of who's involved, like yeah. Emil being the teacher that he is, or Misa being the professor and university owner that she is, you know, yeah. like everybody has a space and a true voice to lend behind the experience that they bring. Yeah. And then it turns into, you know, not only a safe space, but sort of an inkwell yeah. of sorts, you know, in the yeah. fashion industry. And it's like... You can go home. You can go home. You know what I mean? Because I, I literally, I think, well, this season, I know for sure, that's the only show I went to. Wow. I don't really come out of time. Wow. Like that no more. I mean, even the fact that, <laughs> look, I don't normally reveal who, like, our honoree committee is. I've mm -hmm. always kind of kept that under wraps. <laughs> we, are, we are, like, the secret. Oh, did I just spill it? And, and, but. But like, it's a tight committee. Like, but it's a tight committee. And, and even with that committee, like, that was very strategic. I knew that whoever chose the honorees for HFR would need to be really partial. Mm -hmm. Like. And I have to tell you, like, that crew that we have, like, everyone's like, you know, it doesn't matter what I feel about this person personally. They deserve this mm -hmm. because. And that's, it, it's it's really dope. I like those conversations. I, I love those I conversations. I enjoy them. So let's get into <laughs> um, your journey. Mm. And you know what? Even before we get into your journey, like, where are you right now? As, On like, a you've journey. Got, you've got a you you are a successful stylist. Yep. Um Thank you're God. styling two, I think, of the uh most unique voices of mm. our generation, which is her and Andrew Day. Um and you also have like a candle line that is rapidly growing. <laughs> now you're in several stores. Yeah. So what space are you in right now, Lori? <sighs> I am in a space to learn. Mm. Change is happening. Change is inevitable. My God, it is inevitable. And it's one of the hardest things that I deal with in life, period. I like things that I like. I like the people that I like. And I like, I don't necessarily like us to stay where we are, but I just like consistency. Right. Like, don't switch up on me. Don't change. That just drives me so crazy. But. Things in life grow. People change. Experiences change. Experiences change people. Experiences can change places and how we interact with people or what time is. The time that I once had 10 years ago, I don't have now, you know? The way we manage our time is much more different than it was before. Coming out of COVID and isolating has created a new creature, if you will, inside of people. Mm -hmm. Because the things that we did for two years when we were locked inside the house and we were alone, it's changed the way that we inevitably deal with other people. So where things might have been important and we were always on and had to be on, on, on 24 seven. Now we've taken the leisure of saying, you know what, tonight I might just stay home and I'm gonna yeah. just have this cup of tea as opposed to going out and having a cocktail, right. which might turn into 10. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, just that that change is happening. And at first it felt really weird to me mm -hmm. um, because in 2020, I lost my grandmother to COVID. And then I, I started to find this peace within. Mm -hmm. But then the world started doing a thing. And then we watched George Floyd just be murdered for months and months and months on end while watching him be killed and saying Brianna's name and then seeing the world react and then all of a sudden, like, there's a whole war happening right now as we're sitting here having this conversation. So the things that we started to ingest and digest were different. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't know. Like, where do I belong in this? You know, there was always a sense of assurance for me. But that changed. The dynamic changed because the question that I now ask myself, I'm on the other side of 40, what does the rest of my life look like? 
I can't tell you what the day to day looks like, but I know what the feeling of aspiration and how I want to live looks like. I want peace. I want the journey of, you know, no headache. If we're taking trips, we're taking trips. If we have good dinners, we have good dinners. I want to laugh. I don't want to cry. You know, crying is inevitable. Sometimes we do. You got to shed a tear. You got to let it out. But the reality is I just rather, I want to move forward. Um, a good friend of mine had a get together one evening, um, Rachel Johnson, she's a fellow stylist. And in that space, we were discussing the idea of replacing the grind and the hustle with ease and flow. So we're not always hustling to get to the next thing to make a dollar to pay the bills because I've got to pay. We already live in abundance. It's going to come to us. Let it let it flow. Let it flow. Let that money come to me easily, abundantly. I love it. I love it. So I'm in that space of learning how to receive, learning how to be, learn, letting things go and taking a chance on a different version of entrepreneurship with the candles. The Buy Vice candles are doing a wonderful thing. We started with three candles on Christmas Day. We now have 12 as we go into our third year. Um, and it's been a wonderful experience. It's been a learning curve for sure. Um, and everybody was asking like, why don't you do clothes? And I'm like, a lot of people do clothes. That's a lot of time, a lot of patience, a lot of money. And right now with Instagram and other social media aspects, you got to be able to keep up. Because right. right. I promise you, everybody's got a new clothing line every day. Right. So right. if you can't sustain, why even bother? You know what I mean? Um, and my love of fragrance came from my grandmother. And that helped to spark a light, literally. Um, and I know your grandmother played such a huge role. You should see my house because the picture that you gave me when she passed away, which I think is really funny because they say the soul lives on forever when you mm -hmm. extract the eyes out of the picture. So for those who don't know, Brandis gave me a picture of um, a picture of a picture. She had someone paint a picture of me and my grandmother, but it took our faces out of it and it's just our silhouettes. And I held, I hung that picture. It's hanging in my house facing the door. Um, literally because I feel like she's watching over me. So wow, every wow. day, wow. every single day, she's watching over the house. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, speaking of your grandmother, what are some of like the big lessons that she taught you <laughs> that you use even today? Um, I don't know. Everything is a lesson. My forefront are my mother are my grandmother. Um, and just, they're a huge part of who I am. They're a huge part of how I operate with and respect black women. They are the driving for, I mean, like my grandmother, she is the reason I am a stylist. So her and Biggie Smalls are my idols as far as fashion is concerned. Um, because I learned the verbiage of fashion from listening to Biggie Ron. Wow. And my grandmother was the epitome of what that looked like. Shopping at Gimbel's and B. Altman's and Bloomingdale's and Macy's before it was a thing. Alexander's. Like, she knew how to shop. She knew how to put her pieces together. She would custom make pictures. I mean, pieces. Um, there's a picture that is, like, embedded in my brain since I was a kid. In 1972, she went to the Snowball. And she had frosty white lids. She had drop diamond earrings that had little minks on the bottom. And then she wore a column dress that was white. And the bottom of the dress had fur on it. It just had mink fur on the bottom of the dress. And she had a huge afro. Wow. And that picture just lived in my head. Like, that was the way, you know, that was the fashion. That's what it was. Wow. And, and your grandmother was in Harlem? She grew up? Yeah. In, she well, was... she's from Tarboro, North Carolina. Okay. Um, she won a typewriting contest. Uh, and won tickets to come see Louis Armstrong here in New York. And um, if I'm not mistaken, she came here with my aunt Mickey. No, she came with Amona. And they were called the Redbone Girls. And they never went back. They wow. lived here ever since. And she worked in health and hospitals. And that's where she retired from. And, and you grew up in Harlem. I did. Okay. I definitely did. So talk, like, I know your start and how you got started in styling. <laughs> but not everyone does. Oh my God, I'm so, so tired of so, hearing No, we're not, oh. we're not. So I want you to tell us kind of like, you know, how did you get your start in styling? 
God. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> let him live. But, um, well, so I went to school. So professional performing arts school, high school here in New York. Shout out PPS Panthers. Um, that is where I went to high school. When I started going to that school, it was a very small school from grades six through 12. Mm -hmm. And there were 250 students. The first graduating class had, um, I think they maybe, maybe 27 people graduated from the first class. Wow. My class had 36 and our valedictorian was Alicia Keys. Wow. So she and I went to high school together. Time played out. She went to college and um, she did, I call it the double Columbia. She signed a record deal with Columbia. She went to Columbia University and obviously chose the record deal and right. brought her to great fame and where she is now. But um, we have bumped into each other on the street, exchanged numbers throughout college and stayed in touch. We had always stayed in touch. Her mom was actually the PTA president when we were in school. And so... She was really good at keeping up with the kids and called me one day, asked me to lunch. And I said, yes, because I hadn't seen her in a while. Loved her. Fun mom. She was, mm -hmm. the fun, you know, like she's the mother that we could go talk to. Okay. And so, you know, lunch with her was nothing. Let's go have lunch with Terry. So while I was there, Alicia actually called her and asked if she had spoken to me or if she's seen me. Kind of reach out, like, let, let Worry know I'm looking for him. She's like, oh, that's crazy because he's sitting right here. Wow. And so in the conversation, we just started talking about how she was going on tour and she was looking for somebody that would do, you know, her tour wardrobe and help her to get dressed each night and maintain. Because at the time, Patty Wilson was her stylist. Um, and I love Patty because she embraced me in a way like... I was never a threat to her. Mm -hmm. I was Alicia's friend and she was willing to share information with me as I grew with Alicia on tour to how to care for the garments and who the contacts are if you need new things to get this, that, and the third. And then she gave me one of the biggest nuggets I'll ever have in my life. And she said, everybody's got a PR contact. You just have to figure out who they are and get what you need. Wow. I said, oh, that's the game. <laughs> <laughs> got it. And right. so from that moment on, tour turned into a career. I worked with Alicia for 10 years. Wow. You know, and through that vehicle and that door, I've gone on to work with so many. Oh, gosh. I've had so many people to work with. But um, what were some of your favorite moments? What's been like your favorite oh my gosh moment a moment that's such a good question i don't know a wait as a as a stylist or as, like where as a stylist where like young worry would look at where you were at the time and go wait what um honestly it was the first tour and we pulled up into we had done the american leg which started in milwaukee and then went all around america and i had this this running joke with my friends at the time, they had given me a bottle of Voss water. Voss had just come out, so it was that glass mm -hmm. bottle. And they were like, take care of this like if it's your heart. And when you get back home, we'll drink the water together. Oh, wow. And it made it through my suitcase. I made it all the way around America. And when we got back, I was home for one week. And then it was time to go to Europe. And then I did the European leg. And just experiencing Europe and just traveling like that, was such an aha moment. Um, but it was the first time that I did a music video and we were in London and the director called for some changes and I was the stylist that was on set and I was called to task and it was time to use the information that had been given and do what I needed to do and voila. I mean, it's so crazy because I recently, um, I was recently nominated for an award and they sent out these packets and in the packet, it just chronicled all this work that I did and I, stuff I forgot about. Wow. Cause you know, sometimes you do so much, you don't even right, realize, right. let me stop, pause, you know? And I was like, wow, you really done some things. Wow. This is a family show, so I ain't gonna curse. Shout out to Sky. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, like, right, oh my right. God, like, right. it was crazy to see 
the things like um, that I've accomplished, like even recently, I was watching a docu series on um, a magazine that I've worked with for years, and I looked back and I was like, "Yo, I got like sixteen covers with them." Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I was like, "You've done some things, young lad." Yeah, things. so um, yeah, we're wow. we're changing, we're moving, we're spacing, we're doing a lot of things. So we all kind of get into that space, I think, creatively, where you're like, you have this moment where I almost feel like life is testing you in a way. Life is testing you every day. And That's not even It is, there. but there are some moments where it feels a lot stronger than other moments. And I actually remember mm. one of those moments for you. Mm. And um, I think you were very specific about what you wanted next. Mm. Do you mind sharing that story? Where are you placing? Because like, we've had so many. I mean, that's... <laughs> oh my, uh, which this, one? Was, this was before you started working with her and Andrew Day. But I remember you were in this space where you were like, you know, do I want to Do I want to continue styling? Is this what I want to do? Like, um, where Man, am I going to take she, this? Listen, you be remembering this. Yes, story. I remember. Oh my gosh. Um, and you specifically asked for certain types of clients. The ones that knew God? Maybe so. Well, no, I know that's for sure. That was that's how I ended up back in styling. Mm. If that's the space that we're, because you're talking very 2012 then. Mm, maybe so. That, that was the pivot. Because I didn't want to do celebrity styling anymore. Mm. That was the pivot. So we're talking 12, 13 then yeah. 2012 2013 the prayer was to god that i wanted to shift into clients that understood me and knew him mm. that space is completely different um and it's funny because the client that brought me back to celebrity styling was andra day um, how did that come about because she prayed in our fitting she started the fitting with a prayer wow and I was like, if that ain't God. And her birthday is three days after mine. Okay. So we uh, automatically understood each other's love language. I was like, look at her praying and she know how to laugh with me. <laughs> look at her. Uh -huh. So, I mean, it just turned into a whole other thing. And years later, we're still here. I'm super proud of who she is and what she's become. And just the way that she supports me. Yeah. I, I love my clients because they work with me. and But they're genuine people. Right. First. Right. You know? Having a bad day before we get to anything else. How are you feeling today? Right. Let's, you know. So um, but yeah, that was that was the pivot. That was the space. That was the change. My gosh. And that prayer was answered and it was answered fiercely. But I love that I love that God shocks my system, but he takes his time with me. Mm. I do. Like he's gonna hear, because this is what you asked for. And I'm such <laughs> right. a I'm such a Capricorn. I'm gonna take my time to get to what I want. Right. But God's like, come on, because we got stuff to do. I ain't gotta sit I'm not sitting here doing this with you all day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that's that uncomfortable thing. Yeah. You know, like, have you ever been in a place I'm sure we've all seen where, you know, like a fight may happen in school mm -hmm. and you don't really wanna fight. Right. And you got that one friend that just keep <laughs> agitating and like uh -huh. Because I got your back, so it's all right. 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 That's God. Right. He'll just be pushing you forward to make you do what you got to do. I That's all. It. I love it. That's all. I love it. Yeah. And then after Andra Day, which, by the way, her style has evolved. So much. But she's, okay, so tell me about that. she's so that. good. Like, Andra knows how she sees Same her with her, style. by the way. But there, so when I work with people, particularly women, I like to have the conversation of self. I will start wherever you are. How you see yourself is how I will make the best version of you come out. Right. And as you're ready to evolve and change, I'll do that with you. Right. I'm never one to, I'm more of an inside enhancer. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in providing false narratives through clothes because to me it makes ugly pictures. Wow, that's a quote. It's real. I don't believe in providing false narratives through clothes. Right. Okay. Because it makes ugly pictures. It's true. It makes ugly pictures. Yeah, yeah. If somebody's uncomfortable and I'm doing, yeah. if I was sitting here doing this the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I knew when I got dressed this morning where I was sitting, so I put on my jacket so I would leave the shirt alone. <laughs> right. Otherwise, I'd be sitting here doing this the whole time. Uh -uh. Right. That right. ain't what we're here for. Right. You know, so I try to make sure that people are as comfortable as possible when they're getting dressed. I love to ask the question in all of my fittings, how do you feel? Because mm. you're the one in front of the lights, cameras, and the action. Right. So... 
If it don't feel good, tell me now so we can change it. Right. I don't want to be the one. Unless it's something I'm really adamant, like, no, right. this is right. the one. Right, like, right. Do right. it. Right. I promise. Right. I'm putting my name on <laughs> right. it. Right. I got to put my name on it anyway, so right. I want you to look great. But, right. you know, let's do it, you know. So how do you, like, is that, are you a part of that process? Like, when we see their style evolution. Yes. Like, Andrea was very, um... Uh, what was the era that she She was, was in her 1950s rock very 19 phase. very 1950s right. and like rock that which I love that cuz it set up like a visual identity for right. her but now I feel like she's like a butterfly she's, she's, she's like lady. she's wanted to be wow that's just her but that is that is her in the idea of there's a certain level of class that comes with Andrew Day anyway she has such a knowledge of fashion she knows how she knows how she wants to look, one, which is brilliant because sometimes people are not that confident in themselves, but yep. Andra is. Um, and she's very much a visionary, like she's going to hone in and lock it down, mm. like to the swoop on the baby hairs. Like mm. she knows how she wants to see herself. Intentional. She's a Capricorn, mm. just like me. Um, but she's patient with herself. Like rockabilly was something that was different. Right. You know, she set her tone. She set her standard. She opened up her fashion DNA and she put certain things in place. So she's allowed to play with period because that's where she started. Right. You know, same with her and her doing the sweatsuits in the beginning. Like right. that will forever be a part of her DNA. And now it's evolved to a space where there's masculine feminine. So right. we might do a little tight top, but, you know, a baggy pants. Aaron Potts was one of the first ones that we were dressing in because he has that dynamic in the unisex wow. versatility of his clothes. Wow. You know, so you might be able to take that super tight top t-shirt and those huge voluminous pants on the bottom, like, and just marry it all together and it becomes a thing. And I say to her all the time, like, I think it's really interesting that uh, athleisure and comfortability have become such a staple in today's trends. Right. Like, you were doing it because it was comfortable to you and now it's it's trendy. Wow. We see the best of the best doing it, so. And you've sure. also been dressed in Issa Rae. Yeah. I've seen a yeah. lot of looks. Yeah, I started with Issa during um, Spider-Verse this year, and then we went on to do Barbie Press, which was really fun, and um, again, God listening, he brought someone that would understand me, she's a Capricorn, and um, you know, she is, for me, she's like our modern day, I don't want to call her Bill Cosby, but she's like a modern day Debbie Allen. She brings the black experience to the screen in a way that we all can relate to. Yeah. And she's truly that person, you yeah. know, in in her space in her life. So, um, you know, there's a certain relatability to who she is in her fashion and how she dresses. So there's a aspirational level with each one of them, yeah. but still uniquely their own persona, whether they're wearing, you know, fatigues in a t-shirt or the most glamorous gown, you know. Now, since since a lot of us can't afford Warrior Vice prices, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> since a lot of us can't afford Warrior Vice prices. Listen. Like, what advice do you have, just like for the average woman who is trying to create like a very clear image of who she is? Um, I think the clear image comes with intention. It comes with clarity of self. That work, like I said, I dress from the that outside. That work is inside. Yeah, I, I start in here yep. and I bring that to the outside. Yep. Um, and I just think that that is a space that a lot of us are in in this change. Yeah. Like yeah. the choices that we make every day is not going to be the best day. You're not going to always want to be in your tightest dress. Yeah. Sometimes you don't want to be in your loosest dress. Sometimes you want to be the girl that puts on the freakum dress. Like, yeah. so where are you at? Who are you comfortable with being in that moment? Yeah. And as long as it's consistent to your narrative, yep. let it fly. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So when was the candle company? When was, it's a, it's, I just call it Vice, but it's by, by Vice. By Vice. Mm -hmm. When was by Vice? And the Instagram page is by, Vice by Vice. Vice by Vice. Yeah. When when was it born? Um, and you've been thinking it was, about it? So, yeah. Um, So my business partner and I, we had talked about it several times. Initially, I wanted to do a fragrance line because mm -hmm. everyone that knows me knows I'm all about the way that I smell. And I feel but like you smell great, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like when you walk into a room, you know, people 
Mm, somebody smells good. Something yep. smells good. You'll get greeted with that before, you know. Yep. And then when people come in for an embrace, our bodies are warm. Right. So you marry that with a good smell, it's always a good feeling. And um, like I said, in 2020, we relentlessly watched George Floyd be murdered. Mm. And during COVID, I had gotten um, stuck in the Dominican Republic. I went to go visit. And then it was hard to get planes to come back home. So for six months trying to get a flight, it wasn't happening. And while I was there, you know, my agent lives there. And I was just like, you know what? He was like, I think we should just start the candle company. Let's just see what companies are doing what right now. Because I think everybody was in a space of restructure. Because he was like, I can't even tell you the next time I'm going to book you on a gig. And I was like, well, if I do something, I want it to be something that I love. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, like I said, had just passed that April. And um, it just became a conversation. And some people that we knew were doing distribution and... It literally just aligned itself in a way that we could do it. And in doing it, um, it's turned out to be a beautiful thing. We launched on Christmas of 2020 and the scents have evolved over time. Um, I have favorites, specifically number two and ironically number eight, which is our holiday candle. Yeah. And it's so crazy because I hate pine and Christmas candles, but it's an hour candle and the way that it smells is just so unique. It's not jarring. It's mm -hmm. warm and comfortable, which is what our candles do. There's a little bit of a lore behind them. You yeah. burn them, so you know. Yeah, I love your candles. Um, thank you. And one of the Actually, things that- Actually, it's burned out. I'm going to take oh one. Oh my God. Because I, you know, I order- Do you use please. it for pens? Because I clean mine out. Do you know how to clean out a candle, no. Russell? So I'm a, this is for all of y'all out there. Well, three camera lenses. What you do is when you have your candle vessel and it's done, it's burnt to the bottom, you take hot water, tea kettle water, fill it all the way up to the top. That will melt all the wax. Mm -hmm. While it's hot, it's immediately going to loosen up the little wick on the bottom. Just pluck that wick piece out. I usually take like a little plastic knife from the Chinese food and I pluck it right out. Take that out. And then the wax that's inside of the container will solidify and turn into a piece. And you can literally take it out and just wash it. I use them for pens. I put tea light yeah. candles inside if yeah. I want to sometimes. I put little flowers, cut flowers. Well, let me so tell if you, you ever have pretty vases. Well, let I mean, me tell you what I'm going to do. Holders. We bought a case of, I can't remember how many candles we bought <laughs> for gifts okay. for other people. Yeah. I'm going to just grab one of those yeah. <laughs> as a gift for myself. And burn it. And I'm going to burn it. Gift that's, self love. We I'm love gonna that. I'm gonna gift myself. <laughs> I love that. Um, you know, you you. I'm sure you get hit up all the time by people saying like, "I want to get into styling. I want to get into yeah. styling." Like, give us something. What's what advice? Like, if you had a nephew that wanted to get in styling, and we know that like 2023 is way different from how it was when yeah. you actually um, got into styling. What advice would you give him? <sighs> There's a certain perseverance that has to exist within a person to do this. There are multiple avenues. I am a firm believer in do the research. Do the research. Um, and when I say do the research, what is your field? Where do you want to go? Do you want to do advertising? Is it commercials? Do you want to do wardrobe and film? Were you inspired by a music video? Were you inspired by an athlete that you saw mm -hmm. on the way to the game? Were you inspired by a commercial? Were you inspired by street style or your friends walking down the street? Like hone in on what it is that you visually are attracted to and build in that space. There's enough information out here between the books and social media where we can figure out who's doing what, and then you become the best or better version of yourself in, in that, that space. world. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Find out who the pioneers are, reach out, send the emails, have the conversations, do no, it. That... It's, it's, it's a lot more accessible now than, you know, before to me. I mean, everybody might not always answer their emails or the telephone, but it is. The truth, I mean, it is. It's the truth way, is, is just it, you drop a note on that page. It's, it's way more accessible. Yeah. Um, as you you talked about earlier, like you're on the other side of forty. So as you look Let me at see like. The water again. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> just saying, hey, 
Hey, you said it, not me. Um, I did. So as you're- it's crazy because my birthday is coming up and I'm like, you really on the other side of 40. You're on the other side of 40. And I don't be looking at it, so. You don't be looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> You look good. Well, thank you. Uh, and the tea okay. at the end. Exactly. Yeah. So, when you're thinking about kind of what's next for you. Yeah. Like, what, what's next for you? Like, some solid lessons that you've learned. Too where many. you want to go. Oh like, what, what, what do you, where do you see yourself? Like, how do you see yourself evolving? Um, That's a great question. And stay tuned because we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Because it's happening. The yes. evolution is happening now. Right now. I don't know what that looks like. I don't yeah. have a name for this yet. Yeah. Um, for me, I am in a space of prosperity. I'm in a space of healing. Mm-hmm. I am in a space of learning. I'm in a space of growing. Yeah. I am in a space of yearning. Yeah. I want I want more. I want balance. I want clarity. Yeah. I want ease. And I want to understand how that all applies to and with me. Yeah. What does that look like in my friend circle? Yeah. What does that look like with my family? My parents are getting older. Mm-hmm. You know, thank God they're here and we still have the times that we're having. But daily, I'm like, my mom is the matriarch. Mm-hmm. My grandmother's, go- you know what I mean? So things are different. Roles mm-hmm. are changing. Responsibilities change. Yeah. Information is sh- like so much is happening. And I'm like, okay, how does this affect me? Right. And each day it's something different. Yeah. So with that, I am just, I'm taking it in. And however it unfolds, I'll let you know what the name turns out to be. Cause right now I couldn't even tell you. I love it. I'm excited to see where your business by vice goes. Thank you. Um, Y'all go ahead and get a candle or two or three. Or tell them where to get a candle. Tell a friend and tell a friend. Uh, www.vicebyvice.com. Uh, the candles are available there. Um, yeah. And, and how can people follow you? You can follow me on Instagram at the real T H E R E A L Worry W O U R I Vice V I C E. Um, and that's on Instagram and on Twitter at Worry Vice. My thread is the same as my Instagram because now we have to thread yeah, too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's where it's at. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> at me. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love I, <laughs> At me with love. I love I love the place where you're at and I love the evolution. Yeah. Um it's really dope. To I do of- want to say this though, and I, I'm going to give this directly to camera. I'm so sorry. Okay. The disease of comparison is real. Mm-hmm. It just came to my heart. Yeah, go ahead. Because we were talking about social media mm-hmm. and there have been parts of my journey that have not been so easy. Mm-hmm. There are the moments where you're looking for work or you're trying to figure out what the next step is. And in that pivot, you might not be the next big stylist and they've moved on to whoever because there are there's a plethora of us out here. Mm-hmm. You know, I always tell people it's like shopping in Saks. You have your choice of Vuitton. You can do Dior. You can do Gucci. It's all mm-hmm. fabulous. But mm-hmm. what do you want? Right. right. And in that space, we start to compare narratives because we start to see what other people are doing. And this one is shining brighter than me or my day was. Don't do it. There's nothing to compare yourself Mm -hmm. to. The way that we are made is the way that we were designed. We are exactly who and what we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be it. Sometimes it's not so hard to just be. I mean, easy to be that. Mm. But here we are. Mm. Here we are. I love that you just shared that. I had to. It came to my heart. Uh, anything you know else? Anything else on your heart? I don't know if it comes. That you want anything you know, else on your heart that you want to share? Um, no, I, I I love where I love the space that you're in, and you. it's really been dope to kind of see the evolution and see how intentional mm. you've been about like what you wanted in your space, mm. um, and you know to see like where you were because we honored you in 2014. No, was it fourteen? Yes, it was twenty fourteen. Right. The first one I came to was twenty twenty. Yeah, we honored you in twenty fourteen. Yeah. Which, by the way, another favorite moment is like there's this picture of you on the stage and like mm-hmm. me on the side. I love that photo too. <laughs> um, but from where you were then to see like where you are now, mm-hmm. um, and even the fact that now you're like picking and choosing clients <laughs> based on your availability is is incredible and that now you're a founder and an entrepreneur of a whole new business right 
So right. congratulations right. to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congra congratulations Ooh. to you. Is there anything yeah. that we didn't go, that we didn't talk about that you want to share? I don't know. You know, I'm an open book to you. So I know. If you want to go there. Um, How do you feel about the state of blacks, the black people in fashion today? It's optimistic. That's good. It hadn't always been that. Yeah. It's definitely an optimistic space now. I think that there are multiple roles and spaces that we're acquiring that we weren't before. Um, so it looks different. Mm -hmm. um, it can be, it can still be trying from mm -hmm. time to time because there's still a lot of the first, a mm -hmm. lot of, you know, nuances walking through. The one thing that I do believe is always going to be necessary is just hold a hand, mm. sharpen a knife, yeah, and keep it going because we will not be here forever. Right. The things that we do today are for today. I love that you put the the work into a book, you know, and found a way to express legacy. Yeah. Um, because I always ask people, you know, what is your legacy? What do you choose to leave behind? Because when I'm done, you know. Yeah. Then what? So I'm always proud when I see like an Addie Samuel or Jason Rembert or, yeah. you know, those are and people Jason that Rembert I And Jason Rembert talked about you Did he? and the door that you <laughs> opened for him. Well, yes. I mean, Jason was going to walk regardless. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure he had proper information. Yeah. And my God, what he's done with it and yeah. what he's created has leaped bounds. I think that then both of us could have ever imagined for him. Or yeah. myself, you know yeah. what I mean? And so in that space, but that's it. That's how it continues yep. to go and grow. But there's so many people that at this point he has since helped. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that there's, there's space for us to bring it in. The one thing I think is needed, necessary, and um, I guess I'm putting my foot in my mouth and stepping out on that platform, but I believe that there's a union that needs to happen for freelance stylists. Mm. There's no security for us mm. as we get older. Yeah. If either you keep working. Same for designers too. Yeah. You keep working. Yeah. So it goes hand in hand. Unless yeah. you're doing mm -hmm. film and television. Right. There's no security out here. Wow. So. Well, I sounds guess. like. Look, I'm like, I guess. <laughs> Wow. Sounds like you Looks got like something you, to start. You found something to look up. I love so. it. Um, <laughs> this is yours, Corey. Oh, wow. Thank you. And I actually wrote you a note in there. I want to see. And, can I look um, at it? Yeah, you can look at it. And um, I just, I have to say again, just mm -hmm. like, thank you. Because even this last show that we did, I look, I could barely see anybody. Everybody, like it was black. Like the way the lighting out. was. <laughs> But I looked out and I saw you mm -hmm. and I, I felt, it felt like you were giving me like a hug from, mm -hmm. from there. And I was cause the kid, the night was, it was a busy night. I was like, I'm not going to get to, <laughs> and we did, we hugged we right there. We had a for, moment yeah, yeah. and I was just yeah. like, those moments always mean so much because I know you're not seeing like, oh, everything that HFR is doing, but you actually see me. Mm-hmm. You like I look to you first. You HFR like comes. You like really... this has turned into something from our initial conversation. Like I, I love when I see moments like this. I love when I see moments like the Misa Hilton Fashion Academy. I love yeah. when I see like again Emil just writing with Native Son and the things that he's doing. It inspires me because I don't feel like I'm a dreamer. Mm. I am the person that God literally, he plucks and moves me. Mm. But I feel like you guys are my dreamer friends. Like, mm. if you dream it, you can achieve it. So it helps me to at least turn on the light bulb to try to dream a little bit. Like, yeah. you know, it, it's so inspirational to me. So I, this to me is beautiful. But I see you past this because I met you first. Mm. This was a discussion when we met. This yeah. didn't even exist. No, it didn't. It we didn't. met and you were, you know, you were sitting yeah. in the living room trying to figure it out. Yes. <laughs> like it Absolutely. Yeah, it hadn't come into a thing yet. And, you know, look at God. I mean, this is like, this is my baby. Like, yeah. I love this so much because the designers deserve to be preserved in this mm -hmm. way. And this mm -hmm. is just volume one. We've got more to come, but... Um, but no, you, you have always, and still, you always see me first. Yeah. And 
that has meant so much to me. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for all that you continue to do. Um, everyone, please go and check out Vice by Vice. Which dot, is com. dot com or vice by vice on instagram or vice by vice on instagram the candles are absolutely beautiful um smell amazing Thank which you. i knew i mean come on now but it ain't i knew easy. your taste level i, mean, listen, when we I sit knew down, with your taste level these candles were gonna be incredible. when you sit down and sniff some candle like huffing all day it, you can get dizzy. like it's a lot of work like those sommeliers put in a lot of work being that and i didn't even realize that i was taking that job on like and I love it because when I would go down to smell the candles, people that I worked with, they would just look at me like, all right, well, if you want to smell them, we're going to line them up. And they were just fragrance after fragrance after fragrance. After. Wow. And then you've got to mix this with this and this nose to this nose. And what are we achieving? And then, which is why I love what we do, specifically um, just in the way our candles burn. There's an 80 yeah. hour burn. They burn. It, I'm almost positive it took you a long time oh, to burn that candle. I had that candle. I think you sent me that candle in 2020. I know. Yeah, the candle that I'm talking about. Because yeah. it's a soy wax. Yeah. There's no blend. That wick is soy. So it literally is just a slow, even burn. So things just permeate. I love it. And you don't get all that soot and smoke flying through your house. Just saying. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Ward. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you. I'm, I really, I'm really, really proud. And this is congratulations. Thank anyway. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you. I'll be back soon. Look at me just inviting myself. <laughs> you can come but back I'll, whenever you want I'll to. Finish my water, too. Any, anytime you want to. <laughs> well, that's a wrap. Uh, this was so good. Like, man, there are some people in fashion that are so special to me and it's transcend transcended through fashion and, and Warrior is absolutely one of those. So Thank you. I love you. Thank you.